Hi, this is Teacher Jimmy, and today I'm here to talk about this stunningly beautiful oasis in the vastness of space. Specifically, today we're going to talk about lines. More specifically, a bunch of totally made-up lines which help us make sense out of this awesome planet that we all happen to be residing on. So, let's get rid of these orange lines and, hmm, you know what? I think something is missing. There. Good old Mr. Sun is going to be important in our discussion, and I definitely wouldn't want him to feel left out. So, where were we? Right. Lines. Let's start with the most famous. I'll bet most of y'all already know about this one, so I'll go ahead and just slide him on out. That's right. The equator. When I ask students, what's the middle line for our planet, they can usually come up with this word. But... If it's the middle line, what exactly is it in the middle of? Well, earlier I said that all the lines we're going to talk about are made up, and that's true to a certain extent. I mean, if you flew over the equator in a plane, you definitely wouldn't see it drawn out on the ground. But at the same time, if a couple of aliens who had never seen the Earth before flew over it in a spaceship, they would be able to tell where our planet's equator is just by looking at the planet from space. How? Well, as most people know, the Earth rotates, which is what causes day and night, and it rotates as if it were spinning around an imaginary long pole. We call the two spots where this imaginary pole would stick out of the Earth the North Pole, where Santa rules his elf kingdom, and the South Pole, where the penguin parties happen. The equator is the line that marks the exact middle between these two poles, neatly dividing the Earth into two equal parts. The one on top is called the Northern Hemisphere, and the one on bottom is called, wait for it, the Southern Hemisphere, with hemisphere being a big, fancy word meaning half of a sphere. There's actually a pretty cool difference between living in the northern versus the southern hemisphere, but I'll loop back around to that in just a second. So, while I was willing to bet most of y'all knew about the equator already, I'd also bet that you might not be familiar with some of the other important horizontal lines we've got to keep track of. So, without further ado, I give you the tropics. The Tropic of Cancer to the north, and the Tropic of Capricorn in the South. Understanding why these lines are important takes a little bit of talking about how the Earth really works, though. Most people understand that the Earth spins on its axis, and that's why we have day and night. Most people also know that the Earth orbits around the Sun. Something you may not realize is that the Earth doesn't stand straight up and down like I've had it in this picture. Actually, the Earth is usually tilted. Sometimes the Earth is tilted like this, so that the bottom is facing more towards the Sun. And then, as it orbits the Sun, it will find itself tilted the other way, where the top is facing more directly towards the Sun. Do you see here how the top green line, the Tropic of Cancer, is now the exact middle point, pointing directly towards the Sun? It's right where the equator would be when the Earth isn't tilted at all. That's what defines these tropic lines. They are the farthest locations north and south of the equator where, at the right time of year, the sun can be directly overhead. If you live between the tropic lines, sometimes at noon, the sun is truly in the exact middle of the sky above you. If, like most of the, us in the United States, you live farther away from the equator, the sun is never truly directly above you though it can come close. This tilting is also what causes the seasons. See how the top half of the world is pointed at the sun? That's what causes summer. On the other hand, that means in the lower half of the world, it's actually winter. That's right. The northern and southern hemispheres actually have opposite seasons. So for people living in Australia, Christmas comes in the summertime, and July is often the coldest month of the year, and as the Earth tilt ships back, 
the seasons shift too. Okay, two more horizontal lines to go. Way up north, we have the Arctic Circle, and not to be left out. Way down south, we have the Antarctic Circle. At least the Antarctic Circle is easy to remember since it's right by Antarctica, right? And what do these circles near the poles mean? Well, let me retilt the Earth so I can show you. I'm also going to black out the part of the planet where it's night to make this a bit clearer. Look at the top of the world inside the Arctic Circle. Do you see how it never goes dark and how in the south, Antarctica is dark all the time? This is a 100% real thing. Depending on the planet's tilt, when you're near one of the poles, you can have constant, unending daylight that lasts for months. And then later in the year, a night so long that entire pages of the calendar fall away before the sun can be seen again at last. The Arctic and Antarctic Circle marks the points at which it is possible to have an entire 24 hours go by without the sun ever setting. Assuming, of course, you're there at the right time of year. Whew. Here's our hemispheres again. But you know what? I'm getting tired of the Earth spinning. It's making me dizzy. Let's go full-on map for this next bit. There. The lines we've talked about split the Earth into three climate zones. In the middle, between the two tropic lines, we've got, wait for it, the tropical zone. Mind blown, right? In the tropical zone, you usually don't really get seasons like summer and winter. Instead, it's hot pretty much all the time, and you often get a dry season and a wet season. Getting farther away from the equator, we have the temperate zone, where you have the regular four seasons. Though, of course, they're opposite in the north and the south. Finally, in the polar zones, it's cold. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up right there. Well, we have done all of our horizontal lines, but that still leaves those tricky vertical ones. But we've only got two of those. First up is the up and down version of the equator, the prime meridian. This line is different from the equator in a couple of big ways. First, it only goes halfway around the world, starting up at the North Pole and stopping at the South Pole. Second, this line is totally, completely, 100 million percent made up. Unlike all of those horizontal lines we talked about, which are all based on the Earth's rotation or its tilt towards the sun, the prime meridian could have gone anywhere. Why did it end up where it is? Well, see this building right here? That's the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. And... Once upon a time, some astronomers were sitting in that building saying, you know what, we need some sort of middle line to divide the east and the west. Oi, that, that's a great idea. How about we make the line go right through this room? And that, boys and girls, is the true story of why the Prime Meridian is where it is. Just like the equator, the Prime Meridian divides the world into two halves, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. There aren't any other zones to worry about, but there is one last line. The Prime Meridian doesn't go all the way around the world like the equator does. It starts and stops at the poles. On the exact opposite side of the world from the Prime Meridian is our final line of the day the International Date Line. This is literally the line that divides one day from another. You guys know about time zones, right? You know how if I started in Texas and drove east, I would eventually make it into the eastern time zone where the time would be an hour later, right? Well, the International Date Line is the place where when you cross it, instead of moving forwards or backwards an hour, you move forwards or backwards a day. I'm serious. Check this out. We're looking at the world from above, looking straight down at the North Pole, and the red line coming out of the North Pole, that is the International Date Line. 
the two colors on the border of the earth represent different days. The border in red represents places a day ahead. Green is still in the previous day. Only right now, when it's midnight on the international dateline, is the whole world ever on the same date. Usually, countries far to the east that are just on the side of the international dateline, like Japan, they are usually a day ahead of those of us in the west, like the United States. They're just waiting for us to catch up to the same day. Well, you did it. You made it to the end. And hopefully now we all know all of those terms that I've helpfully boxed in yellow. You might want to pause the video here just for a second and make sure you're comfortable with all of them. And make sure you know about how the equator divides the Earth into northern and southern hemispheres, while the prime meridian divides us into an eastern and western set. Whew. I am seriously tired, y'all, but I can't let you go without letting you know the secret code. Today's secret code is the word equator. Big shock, right? Occasionally, we'll have these in our videos, and without the secret code, you won't be able to complete your assignment. Just type the word equator, all lowercase, into the Google form when prompted, and it will let you get at the rest of the assignment. I think that's it. I hope you learned a bit of something in this video. Make sure you get your assignment completed by the due date, but if you have any questions at all, please shoot me an email and I'll be very happy to do what I can to help. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy.